I'm Chelsea, and today I'm going to demonstrate um, another force problem for physics, but in this problem what we're going to concentrate on is centripetal force as well as um, force due to friction. So let me explain the problem. So in this problem what we have is a bike, car, some sort of vehicle that is going around a circular track. Okay. Uh, this vehicle is not accelerating in any way, uh, but it does have a velocity v uh, of 145 over 18 meters per second. Um, the, the track also has um, a coefficient of friction to be 0.32. Okay, so looking at this, when we're Normally doing force diagrams, oftentimes we'll split it up into, um, for our net force equations, into the x and y direction. In this case here, we don't exactly have our typical coordinate system. Um, but what we do have is we have a radial force, which is the centripetal force, which is pulling this car in towards the center of the circle of the track. And acting against that um, is this frictional force, which is pulling out and away. Um, the reason we know that this frictional force is pulling out along the radial line is because this car isn't slipping. If it was moving towards the center, or maybe moving over this way or pulling out of the track, um, then we could suppose there are other forces acting on it. But this car, again, is just going around in a circle without its wheels slipping. So we know that this frictional force must be acting against the centripetal force, which is pulling this car inwards. And there's also, if we look um, from the side of the car, um, we, of course, have gravity pulling the force down into the track, and then the normal force acting upwards. Okay, So this is the side if the car is sitting on the track. Okay? I have also written um, the equations for the centripetal force and the frictional force we'll use. Uh, the centripetal force is dependent on this velocity of our car as it moves around the track as well as inversely proportional to the radius, the size of this track. The frictional force um, is proportional to the normal force acting on the car from the track, as well as this coefficient of friction. Okay, so now that we have all that set up, what we are looking for, um, and the unknown here, is the radius of this track. Uh, so how, what is the minimum size that this radius can be, so that as this car goes around, it doesn't slip. Um, so to set this up, again, we're going to split it into our two net force diagrams that we'll have. Uh, the first one is simply as we have here, which I will call Fy, um, will be, and I'll make um, the direction upwards, so this way to be positive. So we'll have the normal force, and from that we'll subtract the force due to gravity, uh, that is pulling the car onto the track, and that will be equal to the mass times the acceleration in that up and down direction. In this case, the car is not floating up and is not sinking into the ground, so this is simply zero. Okay. What we have here, instead of our typical net force diagram in the x direction, we have radial force. Okay. I will make um, inwards towards the center of the track to be positive. So in that case, our centripetal force is pulling the car, again, towards the center. And then we have this frictional force acting against it, and that's where that negative sign comes in. It's equal to the mass times the acceleration in this radial direction. Um, again, car is not accelerating. It has a constant velocity. So this will simply be zero. All right. Uh, I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to do is look at this net force equation because then it will become clear as to why we need this second one. 
Uh, so when I solve, I'm going to solve for the centripetal force. Notice how my R, which is what we're ultimately trying to find, is in the formula for the centripetal force. It won't appear in any other force. So we get the centripetal force is equal to the static friction force. Okay. Um, rewriting a little more, we get mv squared over r is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal force. Um, and then at this point, we know the mass of, or I'm sorry, we don't know the mass of the car. We do know the velocity. This is what we're trying to find. We know mu s. Because we don't know the mass, we're going to hope that that actually goes away. Um, and as soon as we go back up here to solve for an expression for um, the normal force, you'll clearly see how it um, comes out of our equation. So going back up to this net force, I'm going to solve for this normal force. So I get Fn is equal to Fg, force due to gravity. And the force due to gravity, if you recall, is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity, g. This is a constant. g equals 9.81 meters per second squared. So what we can do is we're going to put this all the way over here, substitute that in for our normal force, and notice how the mass cancels out. So we actually don't even need to know the mass of this car. Um, I'm going to then solve for R. So I will get R equals V squared divided by mu s times g. And if I put in all my values for this, and I plug that into my calculator, I will find that the minimum, minimum radius needs to be approximately 20.67 meters. So, if we know that the radius is 20.67 meters, this car will not be slipping as it goes around the track. Um, so again, this is just exactly the same as you would um, do for any other force problem. Um, but in this case, we deviated from the typical forces in just x and y uh, to have forces that were acting in a radial direction. And that's it. For more information, please visit our website at www.sandersontestprep.com. The link is in the description box below. Thank you.